Would you like to learn how to create this interesting 3D animation with your images? In this video, I'll show you how to transform any 2D image into 3D. You'll be able to animate your logo or any other logo in 3D. Let's see how it's done in DaVinci Resolve. Once inside DaVinci Resolve, with our logo or image in PNG format, we need to position ourselves just above the clip with the image on the timeline and go to the Fusion module. The first thing we need to do is disconnect the Media In 1 node from the Output node. We'll leave a space between them because now we have to add several nodes. Great! Click on the Media In 1 node and press the keyboard shortcut Control Space. This will open the Tools menu. Here we'll look for the first effect we need to add. Search for the effect Image Plane 3D. Here it is. Select the effect and click to add it. With this effect, we'll be able to visualize our 2D image in a 3D environment. Click on the first circle of the node, this small circle here. As you can see, our logo now appears in a 3D environment. Moving the camera in this 3D environment is straightforward. Let me quickly explain how you can do it. If you move the mouse wheel up or down, you'll move the camera up or down respectively. By pressing the control key and moving the mouse wheel, you'll zoom in or out with the camera. Clicking and holding down the mouse wheel allows you to move the camera on the X and Y axis. Lastly, and most importantly, if you press the Alt key and hold down the mouse wheel, you can move laterally. As you can see, we don't have our logo in 3D yet. We simply have a flat image in a three-dimensional environment. Okay, now we need to adjust the position of our image to be able to see it slightly tilted. This way, when we add an outline to the logo to create depth, we'll be able to see it correctly. Once this is done, let's continue adding more effects that we need. Press Control Space. The second effect we're going to add will be the Duplicate 3D effect. Search for the effect and click to add it. Use the Control Space keyboard shortcut and search for the Transform 3D effect. Select the effect and click Add. Again, use the Control Space keyboard shortcut and add the last effect. This time, look for the effect Renderer 3D. This effect, as its name suggests, is responsible for rendering all 3D elements. We need it to export and use the 3D logo. And to finish, Connect the Renderer 3D node to the Media Out 1 output node. Perfect! In the Media Out 1 node, make sure you have the small circle on the right activated to visualize the final result in the right viewer. And on the other hand, activate the circle on the left in the node you're working on to see it in the left viewer. If you don't see two viewers, simply click on this icon to switch between one viewer or two viewers. Before adding the outline to the logo or making any modifications, I recommend changing the rendering type. If you don't do this, DaVinci Resolve will run very slowly. Click on the Renderer 3D node. The default rendering type is set to Software Renderer, which means DaVinci Resolve will handle the rendering, causing the program to run slowly or even crash. We need to change the rendering type and select the option Hardware Renderer. This will allow your graphics card and your computer to handle the real-time rendering of the 3D elements. Great, we've configured everything. We can start creating the 3D logo. Select the Duplicate 3D node and click on the small circle on the left. Go to the Inspector menu located in the upper right corner. Now let's create the outline of our logo the contour to give our logo depth and make it 3D. To do this, we'll create a bunch of copies of the image and stack them. In the Copies setting, we'll increase the value in the last option to create the copies. Let's create a bunch of copies of the skull image, about 200 copies. Okay, now we have 200 copies of the same image, but we can't see them because they're exactly in the same place. We need to separate them and place them one behind the other. In the translation setting, if we change the value of Z offset, we'll see how the copies appear in front of or behind the original. We should change the value of Z offset 
to 0.0001 so that they are as close together as possible. As we can see, all the copies have come together, creating the border or outline in our logo. We can increase this border by adding more copies or separating them a little more. If the program is running slowly, you can reduce the number of copies. For example, we can use 150 copies and separate the copies a bit more. Instead of 0.0001, we can use 0.0002. This way, we can achieve the same result with fewer copies, which helps reduce the load on the computer's resources. Great, we now have the outline on the logo. Simply adjust the number of copies and the spacing to get the border size you want. Now let's move on to the second part of the tutorial, the 3D logo animation. And don't worry, it's super easy to do. But before that, if you are going to download any logo or PNG image from a suspicious looking website, be careful because you could be downloading a malicious file. It's not a bad idea to have your computer protected. And here is where the sponsor of this video, NordVPN, comes in. If you value security and privacy on the internet, this is likely to interest you the most. NordVPN alerts you about potentially harmful links and allows you to browse the internet by encrypting your data and hiding your location to protect all your information and privacy. Imagine you're on a trip and need to connect to the hotel's Wi-Fi. By using a VPN, you would prevent any any unknown person from accessing your personal information, emails, files, and passwords, and thus avoid any unpleasant surprises. But there's more. When connected to a VPN, you can also access exclusive content from other countries on platforms like Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime Video, Crunchyroll. Do you want to watch your favorite movie that's only available on Netflix in the United Kingdom or Japan? Simply connect virtually to that country and you're ready. In the video description, Description, I'll leave you a link with a very good discount to use on NordVPN. And they also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee for all users. You can try it out calmly for a month and see how it works. Many thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this tutorial. Now, let's continue with the 3D transformation of our logo. To create the animation, go to the first frame. Then select the Transformation 3D node. Go to the Inspector panel. Here, we have the option to modify the translation and rotation of the logo. In my case, I'll create an animation adjusting only the rotation. We can modify the logo on the X-axis, the Y-axis, and also the Z-axis to change the logo's orientation. Create a keyframe on each axis that you want to modify. For example, on X-axis, Y-axis, and Z-axis. If you also want to create an animation with translation or zoom movement, you can add keyframes in translation and scale. Once you've created all the desired keyframes, position yourself on the last frame of the video. In my case, it's frame 124. Here, we'll modify the movement of the axis until the moment we want it to stop. I'm going to create a very simple animation where the logo will spin on itself. I'll increase the value of the y-axis so the logo rotates to the right until I reach the desired number of rotations. A value of 900 should be sufficient. We've finished our animation. If we move the cursor along the video, we can see the logo spinning to the right until it reaches the last frame. If you want to make further changes to the animation or make it more complex, go to the last frame and you can adjust the x-axis, the z-axis, the translation, or the scale. In my case, I prefer to leave it as it was before, with the logo rotating only on itself on the y-axis. To wrap up the tutorial, I'll show you a trick to make the animation movement look much more professional. Select the Renderer 3D node and press the keyboard shortcut Control space Look for the optical flow effect and add it. Next, we'll add a second effect, the Vector Motion Blur effect. By combining these two nodes, we'll achieve the motion blur effect on our logo completely free, making the animation look much more realistic. Now you'll notice that areas with more movement appear blurred. If you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, meaning the paid version, you can directly apply the motion blur effect instead of adding these two nodes. You can increase or decrease the motion blur in the Vector Motion Blur menu by adjusting the scale value. 
I recommend decreasing the value to get a better result. Between 0.1 and 0.8 is ideal. And now we have our logo completely finished with a 3D animation. Now let's return to the editing module. Adding a background to our logo is super simple. Place the clip with the logo on an upper video track and add any image or video below it as a background. If we play the video, we'll see that it plays slowly and we can't view it properly. I recommend exporting the video without the background or activating the cache rendering function. In the playback tab, access render cache and select smart mode. You'll see a red horizontal line at the top of the timeline. Wait for the video to render and the bar will turn blue. Now you'll be able to view the animation with the 3D logo correctly. I hope you liked this tutorial. As always, here are many more tutorials for you to learn lots of new things about DaVinci Resolve. See you in the next video.